Hello, I'm going to give a demonstration of using Oracle VM VirtualBox to virtualize multiple machines. So as you can see, I've already installed VirtualBox. It's an open source software so you can get it for free online. I've already installed a few operating systems too, but I'm going to walk through installing Fedora Core 13. So I just clicked New and it's going to run me through a wizard. You type in a name, it's going to automatically try and detect what operating system and what version, so that's perfect. I'm going to be generous and give 4 gigs to this operating system. I want to create a new bootable hard disk, so yes, I'm going to keep these options. It's going to create a virtual hard disk. You can choose dynamically expanding storage. I recommend this because it'll only take up as much space as it needs and then you can set the maximum size. I'm going to go with 8 gigabyte. Okay, so the wizard's going to automatically try and detect some of your system settings, but it's important to go through the settings and still double check everything. General settings should be okay. Your system settings are going to be important. Your IO APIC is the Advanced Programmable Interrupt Controller. It allows for uh, routable interrupt channels, which is important for hardware. It's required if you want to give up more than one CPU core. Uh, also, newer versions of Windows will install a specific kernel depending on whether this capability is available. So it's important not to change this after you install a Windows operating system. UTC time is expected by Linux, so it automatically chose that option. The processor, if you have IO APIC enabled, you can choose more than one processor. Uh, PAE NX is the physical address extension. Um, this allows longer memory addresses. Um, it also gives room for the NX bit, which means no execute. And what it does is it segregates executable code from data in the memory for security purposes. Most computers now support this, so we're going to go ahead and allow that. And the acceleration, the VTX and AMDV is hardware-enabled virtualization. Uh, it requires the host to have that turned on in their BIOS. What it does is it allows the hardware to help out with the virtualization requiring less work from the software so it's uh, important. It's also <laughs> it's also required for 64-bit operating systems. If I try and turn it off it'll tell me it's required because I chose a 64-bit operating system. Display, I'm gonna go ahead and give up 128 megabytes for video memory and leave these where they are. I already set up the storage in the wizard default audio. Networking is important. We don't want to use NAT. We're going to use the bridged adapter because we want our guest operating systems to be able to grab an IP address and be on the same network. So this is my host network card that I'm going to bridge and then it allows you to choose which card, what type of card you want to emulate and you can even assign your own MAC address if you choose to the rest of these options the default should be okay. So now that we have all that done we can go ahead and start it. Well because our virtual hard disk is empty it's going to ask us to put in some bootable media. Since I don't have the actual CD I have an ISO I need to add the ISO to my list and here it is Fedora 13. So now that we've added that CD image, I'm going to select that and hit next and finish. And now if you go to devices and CD devices, you'll see it has my ISO mounted just like a CD drive and this is where I would unmount it. So Fedora is going to boot up. Oh, I got a little air there. You can close the main window without disturbing your other guest operating systems. Now I already have a Backtrack 4 running over here, so I'm going to bring him in. 
so Fedora 13 is already booting up. You can see I'm getting some lag right now because my computer's trying to do a lot of things. Okay, so now we're in Fedora 13. This is the equivalent of booting up a live CD. This is quite laggy. Okay, so let's check the network settings. It looks like Fedora is smart enough to already detect an IP address. Now my host computer is already on a network connected to a router. Now that we've bridged the connections, my computer, my host computer is passing the information to the guests. Now it also requires my host adapter is able to go into promiscuous mode, otherwise it can't do that. So my host operating system is dot sixteen and my guest here is dot twenty three. So on my host operating system I'm running a WAMP server. So I'm gonna try and Firefox my host computer and see if it's connecting. and we'll see this is the default WAMP server page so perfect our guest is connecting to the host now let's close that okay let me pull up my backtrack window and log in now backtrack by default has the network adapter turned off so we have to turn it on ourselves and then we just run a DH client and it'll automatically talk to the router and get an address from the router. So now this one is bound to IP address 21. So let's see if this one can talk to the host as well. I'm going to use Lynx which is the command line browser and sure enough that's the default WAMP page so good. Both of my guests can talk to the host. So let's see if the guests can talk to each other. Let's turn on the SSH daemon on one of my guest operating systems. I'm going to have to generate an RSA key real quick. Oh, let's see if I accidentally skipped a prompt. So let me just do it again. Overwrite, yes. Oh, let's see if it works. Okay, my SSH is started. Let's try an SSH from this guest to the other guest. I believe is 22. Let me run another IF config just to make sure. No, it's 21. And I'm going to SSH in as root. So, all is well. It's connecting. Great, now I have a root console from one guest to the other. Now, just to double check, let's make sure I can get from the host to my guest. I'm going to SSH to the same address. There's the RSA key. Good. Now I have a console from my host to my guest. I'm going to shut down my backtrack and it's going to disconnect both of my other clients. So now that we've verified that all these computers are connecting to each other, you can forward ports from your router to the different machines. You can forward different services to different virtual machines. You can run exploits from one guest to the other without harming your host computer. You can use debuggers in the virtual settings to fuzz programs and see how they act and just to demonstrate one last point 
I can ping the router just fine. And I also have access to the internet. And other computers on the network will see all my guest computers as if they were totally unique computers. And that concludes my, my guide.